Dear chess fans, I am absolutely thrilled to announce a new world record in chess. And the big man is Faustino Oro, the Messi of chess, as he has been called. Or maybe it's just even the new Magnus Carlsen. But in any case, he is the man of the moment. Only 10 years old and 8 months. But already at this very young age, he has managed to become international master. Get this very nice title for the rest of his life, but probably not for long, as considering his real strength, he must become a GM very soon as well. But the first step, international master, is super impressive. And just to compare with other very strong players, for instance, Magnus Carlsen, he got the title only at the age of 12 and uh, seven months. And Hikaru Nakamura, for instance, at the age of 13 and two months. So Faustino Oro, compared to these guys, is already two years ahead of uh, them. I mean, anything can happen still in, um, in the development of uh, young players. We all know that, but it's still very, very impressive. So what did he do? Well, uh, he's playing um, a tournament in Barcelona, a closed IM tournament. He has already secured two international master norms, norms before. But now he is playing uh, another closed IM tournament and um, did very well from the nine games he played. He managed to win four, five draws, remained um, undefeated. Very impressive to have such a solid uh, style already at, uh, at that age. And in this video, I would like to show you one game he played in the first round of that event against the only grandmaster. Uh, his name is Ippolito Assis uh, Gargatagli. And uh, Faustino Oro is playing with the uh, with the white piece. So I think it's a very interesting game. Let's just dive uh, straight into the action. So Faustino Oro goes for 1d4, knight of 6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, Nimzo Indian, and he goes for the classical variation, considered to be a very solid move. And uh, as we can see, Faustino Oro knows his theory pretty well. Black goes for the move d5. Pawn takes d5, e takes d5, bishop g5, pinning the knight on uh, on f6. And uh, here is the move h6, bishop h4. And obviously black can consider here the very sharp move g5 to unpin the bishop, uh, to unpin the knight, to attack the bishop. But it's of course also a weakening move. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Faustino Ola had prepared some something very deep here. Instead, uh, Assis uh, Gargatagli goes for uh, castling uh, kingside, e3, c5. It's a different way of uh, playing, but after pawn takes uh, c5 and uh, bishop e6, by develops the knight to f3, the knight comes out to d7. Here we see that at some point, black is going to take on c5, regain the pawn, and accept a slightly inferior position because of the isolated uh, queen's pawn. Um, but still, very interesting. A lot of um, games still have been played with uh, with this line. Even um, the black player, Assis Gargatagli, had some experience with this exact position be before. So it's clear that Faustino Oro had prepared uh, for it. Uh, he played here the move knight d4, occupying the uh, blockading uh, square with uh, the knight. That's uh, That's a good move, of course. And black decides to take with the bishop. I mean, personally, I'm more a fan of the, the active continuation to recapture with a knight to get the rook over to c8 very soon but taking with the bishop is uh, is also possible but it also takes away the, the pressure on the knight on uh, on c3 and okay here the bishop comes out to uh, to d3 bishop takes d4 trading of the bishop for the knight gives black the chance to um restore a symmetrical uh, pawn structure so now both sides have um uh, pawns on uh, on the d-file. There are open uh, c and e-files here. And also the queen comes out to b6 to hit the pawn on d4. But Faustino Oro has a very nice idea. He played here the move queen d2. Excellent move. And I'm pretty sure it's still part of his uh, preparation. Of course, the big idea is that black cannot take the pawn on d4. There's bishop, takes, uh, bishop h7. And after king takes, you uh, win the queen. So that's not a good idea. But this was also seen in an earlier game of Hikaru Nakamura and Magnus Carlsen. And uh, in that game, there followed the move knight e4. Super sharp uh, move. Uh, we don't have to go in, in detail, but after bishop takes e4, d takes e4, um, Hikaru played the move d5, got a nice passed pawn on, uh, on the d-file. He's ready to castle. 
And it looks like that white's D pawn is, is more dangerous than black's uh, E pawn. So white is definitely a bit better here. But black in the game uh, of Faustino O against uh, Gargatagli deviated here with the move king H8. So the idea is that now the threat is to take on D4. There is no bishop H7 with check any longer. So therefore the bishop has to go back to E2 so that white defends the pawn on uh, d4. Bishop f5 played and here the move f3. I like this move very much as you're taking away the e4 square, not giving black the chance ever to jump in to the uh, e4 square. So a uh, nice uh, technical uh, play by white. Rook fd8, castling kingside played, rook ac8. Also black's does, uh, black does look pretty, uh, pretty solid here. But I should say that uh, this bishop on f5 is usually not such a good piece uh, because the pawn on d5 is on the same color. There's not much to do here for the bishop on that diagonal. And for instance, if this bishop would have been a dark squared bishop, let's say the bishop would have been on d6, I think black's position is much more acceptable. Anyway, rook ac1 was played. The queen went to a5, rook fd1. Black played the move uh, a6. And the bishop goes back to f1. I mean, maybe not much is happening, but especially this phase of the game, I found pretty impressive that you're such a young guy, you're usually thinking about how to attack. But here, uh, Faustino Oro really shows some, um, some class just to, to play solid moves, slightly, um, uh, slowly improve his uh, position with very uh, calm moves. And I think he, he's doing, uh, doing pretty well here. Uh, rook c6. Trying to uh, probably double on the C file. Rook E1 played. And here the bishop went to uh, G6. But okay, now I have to be a little bit critical of a 10-year-old boy. And uh, maybe that's not uh, what I, I should be. But th the next move he played is, uh, technically speaking, not, not a good one. He he went here for the move bishop D3. So he, he wants to, to make progress. And he feels like, okay, training of the bishops. After bishop takes, queen takes. The queen gets to a somewhat better square. But... Honestly, I, I don't think you should really trade off this bishop for the bishop on g6. What you should do instead, I'm not 100% sure. I, I think slow moves like a3 are, are pretty good. You may consider a plan like trying to double on the e-file. And another very thematical plan in such positions, because the center is relatively closed, is a move like g4 with the idea to uh, opening up the king side with pawn break like g5. Maybe the bishop can come to h3. You can even consider shifting the attention to the king side by also uh, getting your rooks uh, to the open files there. I think that is what white is supposed to do. But let's have a look what happened in the game. Bishop d3. The bishops are coming off the board. Black puts the rook on uh, c8. Now rook e2 and black goes b5. So here you see there is there is definitely some uh, some counterplay. Black is about to play b4 when there are some issues on the uh, on the c file. So white played here to move a3. And black can just continue here with a move like uh, b4, which was not played. But after pawn takes, queen takes, I think there is enough uh, pressure against white's weak pawns. I mean, they are still defended, but it also shows that white is not really able to, uh, to do something. But instead, black played here rook c4, which is also fine. But after rook e1, you see that here white is trying to take over control on the uh, on the e file black went for the move b4 now pawn takes b4 and still you you can take with the rook but taking with the queen is so much more natural to, so that you're increasing the pressure against the pawn on uh, d4 and perhaps black felt that uh, that he is in good shape but then we have the real messy of chess these young kids you can see uh, when someone has talent he really smells that there is, uh, there is something in the position. And it also has to do with uh, the placement of, uh, of the king on the back rank because uh, the queen is taking away the h7 square. And okay, white is looking for back rank uh, tactics. So bishop takes f6 was played. Maybe a remarkable move, but a very good one. After knight takes f6, now we see the uh, big move. As white spotted a very nice tactical idea with the move knight takes d5, white is winning a pawn, attacking the queen, attacking the knight. And the main point, of course, is that if you do take on d5, there is rook e8 check. The knight has been deflected from f6, no longer guarding the e8 square. And that means that this is leading to checkmate, thanks to beautiful cooperation of queen and rook. 
Well, Black uh, realized his uh, mistake, decided to go back with the queen to uh, d6. Still, knight takes f6 is possible when queen takes is not an option because of the same mating idea as in the other line. So, after knight takes f6, g takes f6 has to be played. White is a pawn up. And also the pawn structure in front of the black king has been seriously weakened. But how is white going to profit from that? Well, first, give a check on, uh, on e8. As now taking with the rook from c8 is not a good idea. If you do so, then at the end of the line, the rook on c4 will just be, uh, be hanging. So black played here. King g7, one pair of rooks got uh, exchanged. That's, of course, a good uh, strategy. And here, rook d1 is played. So white is a full pawn up. But as you can see, this pawn is not going to run very fast. There are still very important defenders. And in positions with major pieces only, it's all about the safety of, uh, of your king. Well, white's king is safe. Black's king is more open. But okay, in order to make progress, you need to... Uh, try to improve your queen and rook but at the same time also the pawn on d4 needs to uh, be defended still so things are far from simple but in this next phase of the game also Fastino Oro shows some very uh, nice class queen b6 played attacking the pawn pinning the pawn on uh, d4 as well queen e2 played everything is defended rook d8 attacking the pawn on d4 one more time the queen goes to f2 so you see Fastino Oro is not in a rush Keeps everything defended, unpins the D pawn. Queen B3 played, blocking the B pawn, controlling the blockading square. And white is also moving the rook away. You don't want the queen to capture on D1, obviously. Queen C4 played. And now H4, very good move as you are trying to move your king away from the back rank. Black played H5 to uh, prevent white ever from getting this pawn to H5. And maybe that pawn can become useful in the attacking... Um, in the attack later on. h5, queen g3, king f8 played, and now queen f4. I really like white's play here again. Attacking the pawn on f6, the king goes back, and now it is king h2. Very understandable play by uh, white, because first of all, the king is more safe, but there's also a very nice idea for white trying to build up an attack against the black king. And the question is how to get that rook involved. Here, apparently, Black made the decisive mistake in, uh, in the game. As in hindsight, Black should have gone for Queen c1 to pin the Rook on d2. If the Rook ever moves away, then the Queen on f4 will be hanging. If you now go for that plan, we will see later in the game as well, with a move g4, then um, White is trying to open up the g-file at some point to give a check with the Rook there. But Black has now the key move Rook e8. And here you're not able to take on h5 because there is rook e2 check and you see that the white king is in trouble. If you do take on e2, then the queen on f4 will be taken. So that doesn't work. I mean, that is the way to, to get counterplay, to ignore the pawn. And once the white king gets uh, too exposed, you're trying to punch uh, white's approach by activating your uh, major pieces at, uh, at the same time. Well, back to the game. There follow the move rook d5, and I think it's a very understandable move. You feel like you're defending the pawn, you're neutralizing white's extra pawn, but Faustino Oro plays the key move g4. Very nice idea. hg4, queen takes g4 with check. And if the king goes to the h file, then it's rook g2 with mate to come on uh, g7. The black pieces are not able to defend. You may uh, put your rook on g5, but thanks to the pawn on h4, uh, white can simply uh, take the rook on g5. So that is the main idea of uh, white's play. Instead, there follow the move king f8, queen f4 hitting uh, the pawn uh, again. And you see that uh, the queen is um, uh, fantastically placed on f4, but the rook is also ready to come either to the g file or to the e file, depending on where the king is going. Well, first king e7 was played. And uh, well, before anything else, white just played nice calm move King g2. And I think the main point is just to prevent uh, black from ever getting the queen to, uh, to f1. And okay, position is just extremely unpleasant. Um, white also has ideas to use the h-pawn at, uh, at some point. And then, of course, if you want to run with the h-pawn, it's better to have your king uh, 
uh, somewhat closer to, to the other pieces to prevent any potential checks. Now Black started to look for counterplay. Play this tricky move, Rook E5. Um, of course, if you take the Rook, the fourth rank has become open, so the Queen is hanging. You can't do that. But there's a nice little move here for White. It's the move B3. Fantastic idea with the point. If you now uh, do something about the threat of uh, pawn captures queen, let's say uh, queen takes b3, then white can simply take the rook. The queen on f4 is no longer hanging. So that doesn't work. And another very important move. This must have been calculated in advance by, actually by both players, but also by Faustino Oro. If you go rook e2, white should not take on e2 because that gives the, the black queen too many options of um, annoy the, uh, the white king. But you can start with king g3. And that's a beautiful move. There's no time to take the rook as the queen is hanging. And if you uh, try to keep the uh, rook defended, you can swap rooks and then you can follow up with queen e4, also forcing the exchange of queens and with an outside past h pawn and a past pawn on the d file, of course, white is completely winning in this uh, king and pawn end game. So after the move b3, black is in huge trouble. Played here, the move queen b4, maintaining Pressure along the fourth rank. D takes e5 is not possible as the queen is hanging. But there is rook c2. You're improving the rook. You're gaining control over the c-file. And you're ready to invade with your rook via that uh, particular file. Queen takes b3 plate, counterattacking the rook on, uh, on c2. The rook comes in to c7 with check. King d8 hitting the rook on c7. And you may consider taking on e5 and then black can take... Uh, the rook as well, but in general, you rather avoid queen end games, especially when you have uh, rooks and queens on the board. With a potential mating attack, it's better to keep the rook on the board. Rook c6, guys, is a very good move, as also the pawn on uh, on f6 is is just gonna gonna hang very uh, very soon. Uh, this is not complicated at all. There's no good way of uh, generating counterplay. A rook check on e2 can just be met by king g3. And as I said, f6 is hanging, but also moves like a queen c7 are, or queen d6 are, um, are coming very soon. So that's why rook e2 was not played. There followed queen b2 check, but also here the king can, uh, can just hide on g3. Now the, the queen goes back to b4 to pin um, the, the pawn again. You may actually just take on e5, and it's the question if there is actually perpetual or, or not. But... Why to calculate such things if you can just keep on trying to attack the uh, the enemy's king? Queen takes f6 is just uh, much uh, simpler as also um, you capture with check, you hit the rook on e5, and after rook e7 blocking uh, the check with your rook, there is the move rook d6, and Faustino Oro defeated another grandmaster in very impressive style. Black resigned here as um, if the king goes to e8, there is queen h8 with checkmate. Nice little idea. And the alternative to go away with the king to the c-file will just be met by queen takes rook and everything is protected. There's not even a check on e1 as the white queen also defends uh, backwards. So very impressive victory. And that helped a lot uh, to Faustino Oro to get his uh, prestigious title of international master. But the question is, for how long? This guy is super strong. I think his virtual uh, rating is about 2450, higher than me. And um, very likely at some point he um, will also get the Grandmaster title. The question is when? Maybe he can set more records in the near future. In any case, I'm pretty sure we will hear more about him. I will try to follow his progress. And uh, you only have to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet. Thanks for watching this uh, video, guys. And uh, we see each other very soon. Bye-bye.